So by now you've probably already seen my video on getting over someone fast, just what I've done getting over breakups that really helped me to move on quickly and it allows me to just get back into life again and not sit around moping and you know pining for this person. It just really helps just to get your life back and um yeah, to not feel like you put your life on hold because of uh, this really terrible thing that's happened. I've noticed there's a big difference between getting over someone that way and then if you are a very spiritual person, there's a completely different set of things to do. Now, I think it is very helpful to do both things, but the spiritual way of cleansing out that negative energy and the negative just whatever you've picked up from that relationship there's probably gonna be some negative there and sorry guys if it's so loud i have a lot of family in town for a whole week and we're celebrating birthdays and it's just a lot going on so it might be a little loud in the background back to the topic at hand this is going to help clear out all of that negative energy and it's going to actually help prep you for your next relationship sometime in the future so this is just going to get all that stagnation out um, whether you were you know betrayed maybe they lied to you maybe they betrayed your trust or maybe you guys just really just fell out maybe you did something wrong whatever it is we just want to clear out that energy because we don't want to repeat the same thing if you've had relationships or failed talking stages or friendships that have failed and it feels like you've done the same things like it always like follows the same pattern then just know that that is spirit's way of showing you what you need to fix because that will continue to repeat in the future if you do not address it working on things like this it's it's hard it's difficult so let me make sure i have my list because i wrote down the things to do and this will really help. This is more on the spiritual side, but just with refreshing your energy. Basically, you're doing this now, so your future is more exciting than your past. Think of it that way. So the first thing is to take your time with the pain. Um, it's okay if you want to cry. Crying is okay. For some people, you get like a delayed reaction. You might not cry or really feel the sadness until like a week to two weeks after everything went down. Like it might be kind of drawn out and um, that's okay. If you want to keep your curtains drawn, play the sad songs, if you're on the verge of tears all throughout the day, um, that is a normal response. Um, I would feel worse if you're going through heartbreak and you're not feeling anything at all. Um, if you're just kind of numb. Numbness, you might actually get to that point of feeling numb, but to get to that point, you definitely have to release everything and just let everything out. So if you feel like crying, allow it to happen. Um, if you feel like laying in bed and not doing anything, that's okay too. If you don't wanna get out, go places, whatever, if you wanna cancel, it's okay. Just understand that you have to make a cutoff for you. So if you feel like you've been sad for too long already, then you're probably right. You probably have been, but allow yourself to go through the process. You know, if you're thinking of thoughts, obsessing over it, you know, allow yourself to sit there and think about it. You can't completely run away from everything. Usually when I find that I don't like sit with things or just actually, look at my thoughts even if they're negative <laughs> um usually it just like kind of bites me in the ass later somehow it just manifests itself either in me being bitter or resenting that person um this is what basically is going to sour your future relationships this bitterness this sourness um if you feel anger or this everyone betrays me no one you know loves me this always happens to me you know feeling like you're the victim even if you are the victim it's just you can't have that mentality and go into something better or improve your relationship if you have those thoughts so it's okay to allow them to be out there to see it for what it is but you have to understand when is a good time to stop that so figuring out when to complete the grieving process is really tricky. Um, one way that I find out if I'm done with it is I think about what feelings and emotions have I gone through. Um, when you're going through a breakup or a divorce, it is a lot like losing someone, like you're going through grief and there are different stages. So if you're noticing 
actual grief like as if someone has died if you're noticing that you feel angry sometimes if you feel like you're reminiscing about everything that happened in the past maybe when you guys met or something that makes you feel good you find yourself analyzing the negatives like wow i should have known when that happened that this wasn't going to work out or at least i don't have to put up with this anymore the next person is not gonna be like that whatever it is when you notice that you've gone through you know at least even just four of those emotions or those feelings then that's a really really good sign that you are actually ready for the healing process even though this is technically a part of the healing process um you kind of have to get all of that negative stuff out before you can actually start to heal this means it's actually time to start taking action start taking steps um to making your future something that you're actually looking forward to so next after you've gone through that you want to clear out your space with either sage or palo santo um you can do both you can use some type of incense that sage or palo santo um whatever you want to do open the window sage out the space um if you have items from him or uh gifts sage those sage your phone sage yourself <laughs> just sage everything you just want to clear it out um, sometimes i like to use sage first and then go back over it with palo santo palo santo really helps to just bring in like good vibes and um, good luck as well so it's good after you've removed everything with the sage to go back over it with something you could use jasmine to do that you could use lavender palo santo whatever um, so you really want to clear out the space after you've cleared out that space um, depending on how crappy you are feeling um you're gonna want to start cleaning everything you want to start organizing things so i would get a trash bag things that you haven't touched within the last i don't know five or six months just go ahead and throw it away um just clear out the space and then start to organize things you know just start to clean it up um do your laundry and clean out the bed sheets you know um, definitely the bed sheets getting clean bed sheets and uh, maybe you want to even order new bed sheets um, but something about the bed and that negative energy um, especially when this is somewhere where we spend hours every single day in our bed um, but also you know we wake up in bed when we are sad when we are crying when we're not feeling so great um, you know it usually is like a safe space that we run to so you want to make sure that you clean that out so you have to wash your sheets wash the comforter pillowcases and then make the bed so now you have the clean space you saged it palo santoed it um and you organize things um usually organizing is quicker when you're actually throwing out stuff usually you just have too much stuff that you don't actually use and that's what's making things look cluttered so that's why i was like just get like a trash bag that'll be make things so much easier if there's stuff that you don't use get a box put it in the box and put it away but that'll really help liven up the area um and that is a part of taking out all the negative energy too because you just spent who knows how long wallowing in that space um this is the room of someone who's really happy now. This is the room of someone who feels like they have a future, who is excited to live every day. And um, this is the room of like a happy girl. Um, you want to be a happy girl, even though you're not feeling it. This is just a part of manifesting, you know, better things in your future. You have to start living it now. So this whole process of cleaning it, making it look nice and comfortable, is very 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 important so you might have some things that you want to tell that person um you might get waves where you feel fine and you're moving on and then all of a sudden you just something reminds you of them and you get angry you might have times when you feel betrayed like they're with someone else right now or i don't know you just start with this negative inner monologue whatever it is um if there is something you want to tell that person i would go to your notes and i would type it down um you know all of those negative things um but then i would delete it do not keep it there just type it out get it out do not send do not do anything cut copy paste but type it out and then delete it you don't want to keep it this isn't something you really want to write out either but you just want to you know maybe type it on your phone whatever get it out and then delete now you want to actually get a paper and a pencil and it really helps to get either a colored pencil that's red or a red marker or a red pen and um, you want to write all the things you want to release and let go so this 
to get to this point, you had to have actually felt all those emotions and feelings during the grieving process. During that process, you might, you know, feel like you're not good enough. That's why you guys aren't together anymore. Write down everything that you want to let go, all of those negative things that you were thinking earlier during the grieving process over the last couple days or a couple weeks, and you want to write it all down that you're letting go. If you want to let go of them, put that in there too. Um, you just want to release it because there's no room for that stuff anymore. Um, if you want to let go of having, um, you know, failed relationships, put that in there too. Whatever it is that you want to let go. Um, after you're done with this, you have a choice of you can burn it safely, you know, get a candle, flame, burn it, spread the ashes. Um, or you can just get a candle and um, maybe light the candle, let the candle burn out completely. So this could be like a tea candle whatever and then maybe you want to go bury it or throw that away with that paper but either way you have to get rid of it you're just letting go this is great to do during a waning moon not a waxing moon but a waning when you want to get rid of things um so that's why i said take your time with grief because some of this stuff you're going to have to kind of schedule around what is going up above there so doing this during a waning moon cycle um, will actually expedite this process obviously you can do it during a waxing moon cycle but i'm just saying um, if you want to be very, very thorough during a waning cycle. Okay, so this is a big one. This is one that I learned, gosh, years ago, and um, I did it. There's this Hopopono meditation. Um, there's other people you can look up videos on it. People will explain exactly what it does. This is a forgiveness thing. This is something for your heart. Um, I've done this with traumatic things from my childhood i've done this with exes or even old friends but um look up this meditation i love to do the one with aaron dotty um i'll have it linked below so you guys can get to that but um do this meditation it's about 20 minutes it's very powerful and it's going to help get out this bitterness that you are holding on to people can hold on to bitterness and these resentful feelings for years so you really want to do something like this to get it out um you can do this one time or you can do this three days in a row whatever you want to do but um i would not skip this step and um i'm not going to go too much into it because you can there's other people to explain to you exactly what this meditation does but this is how you get forgiveness even if this person harmed you even if you did nothing wrong do this meditation trust me sometimes asking for forgiveness is just kind of turning off thoughts of that person that person it's taking all of those negative feelings or maybe even feelings of fear completely transmuting it into just nothingness which is what you want when you really have forgiveness in your heart and sometimes the people who have hurt us the most are the ones that we need to forgive even though we did nothing wrong so this isn't saying that you did something wrong but this is just something that i think psychologically just helps it's like i said there's other people who will explain it but it's a whole thing you want to look into this hopopono meditation to clear out that bitterness you do not want to bring this these feelings or these thought processes or this new way of thinking into your next relationship all right this is a big one this is a big one. This is huge. And I know a lot of people are gonna to wanna to skip this one and not do it. You've, you've gotta do it. This is one that took me many years to figure out that I even needed to do this. And when I started doing it, it was like, I could actually get over things, over people so much quicker. I had no idea it could be that easy. But um, this is really hard. Um, you're gonna to have to be really vulnerable. And when we're vulnerable, I know when I'm vulnerable, I feel like I'm stupid. I feel like they're gonna take advantage of me. I feel like I look weak. I feel humiliated. Um, it is such an uncomfortable, embarrassing process. In being vulnerable, um, you have two choices, or I mean you have three. <laughs> you can text this, you need to reach out to this person. You can text this, you can do it over a phone call or FaceTime, or you can do it in person. Um, for me, I'm good with just texting this out. Sometimes seeing a person in person, like that's just, I'm just like a waste of time. Like I don't really want to do it. Whatever works out better for you. You might be a, the type of person who likes to talk on the phone, but um, you, you have to do this. You have to do this, but um, you have to reach out to them and 
reaching out to them probably isn't the hard part because when you're going through breakups sometimes we like to drunk text or when we're feeling um, just some type of mood swing, either a huge rush of emotion, thinking about them and how things were, and we wanna text them, or feeling sad and we wanna text them, whatever. But usually we do it, and so um, this is something you want to choose to do. Don't just ride on a random wave of emotion, but um, you want to collect your thoughts, and um, if you need to write it out and read it to them in person, you can do that, or you can just text it. You can email it. Tell them how everything has made you feel, and you have to do this, even if it's their fault, without attacking them, without saying what you think of them. You, so, I mean, let's say you find out someone was trying to talk to other people or like we're on dating websites, um, you know, something that you could say was, I felt blindsided, I really, really trusted you. Um, if you feel like, you know, you constantly are on the verge of tears, then just say that. This is something that's made me constantly feel like I'm going to cry or maybe burst out tears for no reason. Um, if you want to say that I thought we were going to be together for long term, say that. Um, you just need to talk about your feelings, um, every, everything. You just need to talk about your feelings, but um, don't bring them into it. Don't bring them into it at all. Because again, this is something you're doing for you and not for them. So you're just kind of getting this off of your chest and what you are doing is you're just bringing in closure. This is closure. Um, some people will go through a failed talking stage or a breakup or a divorce and still be drunk texting that person years or months later. Um, a lot of people don't have closure. They never have that closure to move on. Um, and um, being honest and being vulnerable is a way to get that closure. So this, it's so funny that something so embarrassing and humiliating could actually, this is why it took me so long to figure this out, could actually be the thing that releases you from all of this heartache and this pain that you're feeling with this person. Now, um, this is not something that I'm saying that you're doing and is gonna make this person apologize to you or get back together with you. So if you're doing this and that is what you want as an outcome, you need to get that out of your head. Um, sometimes they don't say anything back at all. Sometimes they actually start a fight and get defensive. These relationships ended for a reason. They ended for a reason. So I don't want you to think that what they're going to say is going to bring you closure because it's probably not. You're just saying everything that you wanted to say. So later on, you're not getting freaking drunk six months from now and still hitting them up or getting back into that just negative train of thought um, or even comparing them with new people that you meet. Like, ugh, just the hold that some people get on our energy, on our time, on our love, on our heart, even when they're not around us is frightening. So that's why you're doing this and um, it's freaking hard guys because it's just freaking embarrassing <laughs> i feel like i'm being taken advantage of or that i'm just weak or they're gonna be like this stupid person because you know deep down that they really don't care you, you just you know it don't skip it if you really want to stop all this pain don't skip it next um you can either do this after you get that text out or get that email out or tell them what you need to tell them whatever conversation you guys have you can either do this next or you can do this while you were basically clearing out your space and cleaning but you want to put all the pictures and the videos of you guys together in like a folder or you want to delete them so either put them on a folder in your phone something that you don't just come across by accident um you can either put them in the folder or just completely outright delete them um, this goes this is like the same for like any gifts or anything that they've given you um, you can either throw it away or I like to keep the things I'm pretty fine with it you know yeah there will be times I'll see something and I'll remember what we were doing that they bought that for me or how I felt and um, you know obviously it's sad it makes me sad but if you're doing all of these other things you'll be able to live with those things in your home in your space and not get pulled back into those really sad, depressing thoughts. So um, 
but you do what you need to do if you want to give back the gifts give them back um that's a really big sign of just i'm done um or just throw them away you have you have options um but the pictures and the videos that's um that's a big thing and now so during this especially when you're going through the grieving process you'll probably notice that um you will start feeling bad about yourself you'll start to maybe feel fear or like you're insignificant um your insecurities are going to be coming back in full force whether you're the one who left the relationship or not or maybe they dumped you whatever but um you might be thinking they're going to be find someone better than me or maybe you'll be thinking about your flaws and how maybe that played a part in why you guys are not together you're just going to have this negative monologue going on and the scary thing about it is sometimes i don't even realize it I don't even realize how hard I'm being on myself when I'm having these sad, depressed thoughts after like some breakup. It's, it can get bad and you might not even realize it. So getting into like a self-love affirmations, there's ones that you can play at night very, very softly in the background when you sleep. Um, there's like an eight hour and they'll just save the affirmations with like very gentle music. You can listen to that. Um, or you can write down or start researching maybe five or ten and repeat them to yourself every morning probably when you're getting ready and um, honestly when you start repeating things like that it really does lock into your mind but um, looking for your own that actually make you feel something that you can actually say with passion I think there are some that work better than others but for every person it's going to be different so that's why like researching self-love affirmations and um I don't know listening to what other people like to tell themselves like uh, that's something that you have to do but you should do that either with the subliminals at night or just um you know repeating 10 every day um another thing that um you have to do is choose like one or two things that you've neglected during your time with that person maybe you notice that you're kind of out of shape now um maybe you stopped hanging out with your friends or like doing girl nights or time with your parents or your mom Whatever it is, choose one or two things and make a commitment to basically revive them in your life and to actually do them. And so um, my favorite one, and the one that really, 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 really works, because it goes hand in hand with the other one that we just talked about, with affirmations, is to do some type of body change. So um, this could be working out to grow a certain part of your body or working out to decrease a certain part of your body. Um, this could be you looking into, you know, hey, I've always wanted Inv Invisalign or braces, and you finally, like, making a plan to, like, have it actually happen. Um, but it's really important to do something like this because when we're going through a breakup or a divorce, basically what happens is that everything is so out of our control. Like you're just kind of thrust out into nothingness and you have no control of it. So taking control of something, either if it's healthy eating or working out or new hair, whatever it is, um, can really, really, really help you. And it's going to boost your confidence which at this time it's probably just freaking deflated and dead because you have that negative self loop that you just kind of fall into there's two ways to do this next part um you can either google research whatever you have to do something about getting like a healing candle or a healing oil so if you know someone who fixes candles or fixes oils and you trust them and you want to you know buy one buy it and you can do your own um you know basically get a piece of paper write down things that you want to heal within yourself and burn you know the candle or wear the ointment whatever but uh, this is really really important so you make your own and um you know it's cool if you have to order things off the internet because giving it time for everything to arrive kind of like makes it more important kind of it's not like just something that you just did on a whim it's like no i'm sitting with this and i'm building up to this point of healing um but getting a healing candle or healing oils you can bless it yourself or you can charge it under a full moon or something like that but that's just going to help bring in um, new energy and basically release all of the trauma that you have because we don't know it but we have built up trauma and um it's really hard to just break so you might need help from someone else like i said purchase from someone that you trust or make your own 
and your research. If you're not into candles or oils or manifesting and writing down the ways that you want to heal under the light of like a full moon, that's all completely fine. <laughs> that's completely fine. I see people doing this when after a breakup they get a new haircut or they dye their hair. <laughs> A lot of people dye their hair or they'll cut it or they'll get bangs um, or just completely like a new wig that they usually never would have gotten. They treat themselves in some way that completely changes their look. It's basically the same thing. It is a part of the healing. It is a part of um, you raising your confidence and that's what's going to help you for the next part of actually manifesting the relationship that is going to change your life.